and welcome back to the Mole Temple. This is Negaroth still with you, still looking to cause some damage to both myself and uh, this game. And we are right off the bat greeted with some pyrotechnics here, which somehow spawns a, uh, a rather large encounter. Just like back in the army. Do what you're told, walk softly, touch nothing. But up top, we never had to face things like these. I don't know if they actually uh, teach you those kinds of ninja skills in the army, but uh, that's of little consequence right now as we've gone from having to deal with just one ogre to now two ogres and a swarm of these little uh, robotic drones. This fight can cause you a bit of troubles if you're not expecting it. Uh, not so much by the little drones, um, though they will totally take away at your health, but more by having to deal with two ogres and the drones in, granted, a fairly large area, but that's really not going to help that much. But I've already managed to dispatch them because I had my razor ready and uh, just taken a few of these little drones that were left swarming about. And over in this little uh, nook here, we got our next secret, which is some ammo. And uh, I think that was a flamer. I, uh, I still don't really know which enemies are best used, or, the, or which enemies um, stand to take the most damage from the flamer. But uh, just taking a look around this general arena, with its uh, fountains and invisible or uh, camouflage pottery. Continuing on past the uh, laser vases, I suppose. We, uh, we now are greeted with a room of falling zombies and hopping vampires. Uh, it calls it a tank room, but uh, I'm not really sure why the, the boiler room uh, takes up more of the temple than the temple itself. But uh, I'm sure there's a temple somewhere in here. Somewhere beneath the uh, zombies underfoot and uh, all the machinery boot to the ass. And uh, we're still getting barraged here by zombies, but yet again, as we have already seen, the uh, the uh, ice bullets take quick work of them. And uh, as we just saw there and there, um, the ice bullet actually managed to do the killing blow, which uh, you're not going to see very often. And there I finally did the uh, another available fury combo for the, uh, the ice bullets, which is the ice bullets plus the uh, the gauntlets melee, which does a combo move called just ice or justice, as I'm sure it's meaning to get across. And uh, there's actually a lot of empty space in these tank rooms, but there's actually not a lot to them. And massive graphic corruption there. I, I think that was an enemy that somehow got pulled to oblivion, but uh, we're going to move on past that. Going to totally ignore the bad for the worse that this game has to offer. So we uh, we have a qu uh, quite a number of quickly chained together ambushes here. It doesn't seem a lot at first, but you want to make sure and take these rooms as slowly as possible. Try not to rush through them uh, to try to get to the exit as it will continually spawn more and more enemies and they can quickly become overwhelming. And as we've taken care of that ambush, we now see the second ambush coming up around near the corner here. It's quick, it's uh, quite terrifying. And I mean that very sarcastically as it's pretty much a joke and I've gone ahead and triggered the next ambush. Not really realizing that I still have quite a bit of uh, Barbies left behind me. And when I say quite a bit, I do mean quite a bit. But uh, thankfully, I was keeping my fury meter up for most of that. So we have uh, we're up to fury uh, 16 right now. Sadly, though, uh, there's not really any more ambushes left in this particular room. But we do have a friend waiting for us. Another mechanical guardian. But you know what? I don't really don't feel like dealing with him. So quick uh, flaming skull takes it out very quickly. And normally, uh, when the Flaming Skull does its particular duty, it usually explodes. 
But uh, for some reason, I it, it still alludes even more to the fact that mechanical entities aren't supposed to be affected as much by it. But uh, it just keeps on going, cackling <laughs> about as uh, it continues its flaming path. But yeah, a few more randomly placed uh, spider Nazi krauts. I don't know why I keep calling them Nazis. Imperial Army soldiers. Imperial Army just sounds vaguely stupid. My noble kindred died in these great halls. Now the wind sings mournfully for them. For the lost, those who lived in the shadows. You, my master, are the only one who can redeem them. There's no damn winds down here. This place is a tomb. Perhaps you cannot sense it as I can. And Simon, sensitive as always to the plights of uh, his fellow man, uh, he can't hear these. Uh, he's he can't hear the winds. And honestly, neither can I. Over the bones crunching and the blood flowing and the stakes flying. But I switch back from the uh, stake gun back to the uh, the ice bullets for a good reason as we get a short fireworks show here and the reason I switch back is because they decide to send about uh, 10 cobalts down these stairs here and being as how they have the high ground obviously we're at a horrible disadvantage but uh, with the ice gun or with the uh, ice bullets I should say they are quickly dispatched after being frozen and we are able to uh, move on without much of an issue So another large, fairly empty room had a few enemies leading into a rather innocuous looking corridor, but this area is actually pretty deadly if you do not know what is going on. So we, get, we got a few Barbies to deal with, and then we got a vampire god to deal with. I don't think that the flaming skull is as useful against uh, the ogres and vampire gods as most weapons and spells. But now that we've taken care of him, you may think, alright, everything is good, but you would be wrong, because guess what? We have another vampire god to deal with. Now this may not seem like the worst possible ambush, but the thing is that that second god can actually be triggered by moving around uh, this general area. So there could be a very good chance that going from just you know, one large killer entity to having two large killer entities in very little space can be very dead. Especially with the fact that you're still having to deal with the, uh, the few random zombies running around slapping you. But I was, you, I was uh, expecting it after having died to it about two or three times, but we don't have to see that. Uh, I was able to, uh, you know, negotiate it fairly easily. And just uh, checking around here to make sure I didn't miss anything useful, which uh, I didn't. It's just kind of a symmetrical hallway of sorts. And uh, yeah, we'll continue on into the next room. I think we're actually back to the, the temple proper, but it's hard to say. What the hell? You're trying to trap me, huh? Yeah, the, I guess this could be considered a trap if it wasn't already the same type of ambush we've run into 20 times already in this level. But, uh, you know, we, we won't expect too much from Simon in the way of uh, expecting traps. But this, uh, this room can actually be just as bad as the previous room if you're really not expecting it. Just because standing by the doorway there, they will all come rush at you into that bottleneck and there's considering that I just used all my razor ammo on those two vampire gods I'm kind of having to uh, go with the normal bullet weapons but uh, somehow I managed to get a few good uh, shotgun headshots in there which uh, allowed for most of those enemies to be easily dispatched but uh, yeah like I was saying uh, I I guess this could be considered the back going no, going back into the temple proper. It still seems like there's quite a bit of machine work.